we can All right. I'm, re I'm recording. John Mark's going to come around to this side of the table because this side of the table can remember their passwords and that side of their table cannot. Exactly. Actually, I don't know the password, but my browser knows the password. But Mine did too at one point. For some reason, yeah. Oh, oh, are we going to be shoulder to shoulder? Whoa, I'm not. I'm not walking away from my computer. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last time you did that, all sorts of bad things happened. Oh, all right. All right, call this meeting session. Uh, welcome to the, the latest edition of the Community Hangout. Um, all sorts of things are on the table. I am... <laughs> and Amisha is standing because she's tired of sitting. Um, so I want to talk... Uh, so we got several things going on, um, most, uh, most having to do with... Um, uh, the conference, uh, with lots of stuff going on there. Um, got a lot of sponsors, a lot of great, uh, a lot of people have uh, bought tickets now, which is great. I think the vast majority of speakers have bought tickets. And we have a major undertaking in the form of, you know, Python 2 to Python 3 and Django 1 to Django 2 upgrades, which um, which we'll want to talk about that. And then we, I think we have uh, Reggie, uh, we'll talk about his uh, tutor tool. Um, but before I get started, is there anything else, is there anything that people want to bring up, um, just to talk about, uh, anything in particular? Um, one thing that I had hoped to add to the agenda, which I unfortunately could not, was there's been an effort to do anonymous access to courses, uh, being undertaken by some folks at OpenCraft and elsewhere. Uh, that'll have to be at the next, um, community hangout because it, it, there just wasn't enough time to put it together. Uh, so look for that uh, in the next uh, Hangout. Um, today, I'm just going to tell you that people are doing it, uh, and then you can hear more about it uh, the next one. So uh, any, anything that anybody wants to uh, bring up, uh, now is uh, think of an uh, open mic for anyone who's, uh, who's here. Otherwise, we'll just uh, dive into it. When is the next one? Uh, generally, we try to have it the, the second Thursday of every month. So I think that is, I don't know, let me look it up quickly. It's so about a month. It should be <laughs> Valentine's Day. We're gonna have a hangout on Valentine's Day. Okay, easy to remember. <laughs> Thursday the 14th. Uh, we may or may not have that. We may have a different date for that one, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, well, no one here has dates, right? I mean, we're... Hey. <laughs> I joke. Um, okay, so conference. Uh, look for uh, a program to be sent out um, in a couple of weeks by the end of this month. Uh, you should have, everyone that was accepted to talk should have received their acceptance um, and hopefully you registered. If you need help, if you didn't receive anything and you're still waiting for me, uh, let me know and I will um, make sure to take care of that uh, forthwith. Uh, but we are, um, we have, already matched last year's um, sponsorship. So everything we get in sponsors uh, above from here on out will make us, um, uh, will, will put us over the top uh, compared to last year, which is great. Uh, last year we were, you know, talking to sponsors right up until the, the very beginning of the event. Um, so that we have a lot of momentum. We're going to announce an instructional design summit uh, for Tuesday, uh, March 20, uh, 26th, we're going to announce uh, a mobile summit, also the 26th, as well as kind of a, a DevOps day uh, the same day. So look for those announcements coming out uh, next week. Uh, lots of things happening. We're launching a podcast. If you want to be on the podcast, let me know. Uh, if there's something interesting you want to talk about, um, I'll be happy to record you and, and put it online. So with that said, I think... Uh, I'm going to turn some things over to Ned, who's going to talk to you about Ironwood. Um, are there any questions about anything I just said? <laughs> Bless you. Someone's allergic to good news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take that as an endorsement of moving to the next uh, item on the agenda. So, all right. So, Ned, you want to talk about Ironwood? Sure. So, uh, Hawthorne came out in July or August. I forget the exact details. The next OpenEdX release is called Ironwood. We are going to start the formal release process tomorrow by cutting the master branches. 
That means that Iron Wood will be, would, will be based on code that was deployed to edX.org today. Uh, I haven't actually heard if a deployment did or didn't happen today, but if it did, that's what Iron Wood is going to be based on. Um, we'll do some checking ourselves of Ironwood. We'll mark something as a release candidate and I'll announce it to the community. It would be great if you each could try it out, see if it works for you in your environment and give us some feedback. We count on the community to uh, do the real world testing um, of the uh, open edX releases um, because we run master. So we don't have, um, our feet in the fire of exactly what Ironwood is going to be. So we know that it's working this afternoon if, on our machines, but we need to hear that it's gonna be working in your environment too. Um, any questions about Ironwood or the release process or what you're supposed to do and what I'm supposed to do? Uh, Ned, I had a, a couple of questions. Um, yeah. I, what's the plan for release notes? The plan is that John Mark is going to figure out how to write some release notes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking That's to you. Thank you for bringing that up because we're talking to a couple people internally about doing that. If anyone wants to contribute to that process, I am more than happy to uh, uh, to talk to you about it. If you want to be included in our uh, meetups or in the draft process, I'm more than happy to loop you in and uh, yeah, use all your free time. So. So Peter, when this, this in, in the spirit of full transparency, I don't actually know if we have written any write-ups of what features have gone on edX.org since last August when the partner announced, when the uh, product announced, last product announcement appeared on the openedX.org website. Do you have a source of information like that? Uh, no, I guess that's part of why I'm asking okay. uh, what the Good. plan is. Uh, right. I, I also just bring it up because with the Hawthorne release, we had some confusion uh, about uh, how to turn on features. Right. Um, there were things in the release notes, but no instructions on how to turn them on. Yep. Um, and uh, there are things that I know that are in master now that I want to be able to turn off. Ooh, uh, okay. okay. Is there already a switch for it or? I, if I read the PRs correctly, yes. Okay, good. So uh, it's better if it's a documentation problem than a implementation problem. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and it reminds me of something else I want to talk about once we're done with the Ironwood question. Any other questions about Ironwood? No. Um, internally at edX, we do hackathons, two day hackathons about once a quarter or so. The next one is coming up, uh, the week after next, I think it is. And I think the project that I would like to take on during that time is using some new tooling we've got for annotating code as a way to add documentation to feature flags, waffle flags, and configuration models. And if uh, people want to help with that, either people like Peter who are within walking distance of our office or people who are remote and don't mind getting on Slack and seeing what's going on, uh, get in touch with me and we'll see if we can loop people in remotely for those two days. Or get some, at least get some feedback about before we start or you want to hear about how it's going after we end or whatever it is. So I would, uh, some, some forces came together yesterday in my mind, and I think we have a shot at actually doing this. And OF17 has recommendations of what types of things we'll want to annotate for our feature toggles and so forth. Configuration models, by the way, are probably going to be deprecated. So anyway, we should touch base and see like what's the biggest bang for the buck mm -hmm. um, and make sure we're consolidating on good best practices here. But All right. That would be definitely very useful for both the community, it sounds like, very much, and, um, and definitely internally as well. Right. Okay. Uh, was there something else I was supposed to say about Ironwood? No, I think Ironwood's done. Um, okay. So now we can talk about, is there anything we need to talk about with Python 3 and Django 2 okay. specifically? Right. New item. So 
it is now 2019, and that means uh, I have an advanced degree in mathematics, so I know that next year is going to be 2020. <laughs> and uh, what that means is that Python 2 is going to end its support. Um, the Python core committers have said that on January 1st, 2020, they will stop supporting Python 2, and they will no longer provide security fixes or bug fixes for it. Um, and as a result, Django will stop supporting their last version that runs on Python 2, 1.11, which is what we're now using. And a whole slew of other libraries that we depend on are going to stop supporting Python 2. And what that means is that we need to get uh, all 850,000 lines of Python in Open edX onto Python 3 sometime within the next year. And if you look at the schedules of releases after Ironwood comes Juniper, which is probably the release that's gonna be running at the time of the new year, then maybe we have to get it done sooner. So it's a big job. Uh, it's kind of important. It's something that's gonna affect all of us. So we're doing work here to organize the work. Um, one of those things is something that you've heard about before, which is called the uh, Incremental Improvements Project or the Inker JIRA Project. Um, the, the Inker Project is designed to be uh, small, achievable, uncontroversial changes, um, most of which are aiming to move us closer to Python 3 compatibility. Um, if you are interested in helping with the effort to Python 3, a good place to start is with that JIRA project to see what work needs to get done. Um, for instance, right now we can't even run tests on Python 3 because we can't install our, all our dependencies on Python 3, so the, the next work that needs to happen is fixing up some of our dependencies to use Python 3 compatible libraries. So all that being said, we're looking for interested people to help us think through the hard parts, to do some of the easier parts, to uh, raise awareness of the problem that's coming up and help us uh, move the code to Python 3 compatibility. Anyone got anything to say about that? No, you're all, you're all busy reading the Inker project on Jira, so you're too busy to chime in with, I am definitely going to help. I understand, I love that. That's the way this community is. No? Half the job is stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, I think I mentioned this uh, at the last, uh, hang out, but it would be um, helpful to have like a link to the project and some suggestion about how to monitor it just because uh, I can't figure out Jira. <laughs> okay. Um, that, that's definitely maybe a Slack important. channel. Yeah. Yeah. The making, making the, the, work, the, the work itself more accessible to people is good input and we'll, we'll look at ways to do that. We're very Jira-centric around here, um, but we understand that not everyone likes it. Not everyone here even likes it, but um, yeah, definitely making the, the information more available would, would help. So we'll take that info for Jeremy. And yep. Are there any suggestions of what tooling is better or how to surface it? Or is it like another <coughs> dashboard on Jira? Yeah, I don't, I don't. Peter, what would help? What what the what emails directly to you with anchor tickets that that that's been signed with that? Uh, I was just looking for uh, the link that you guys use to keep track of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. like, I know that anchor is the name of the project, uh, but whenever I try to find the page that goes with that, it is a little incomprehensible and. If I have, if I know I have the right one, then I will learn to live with it. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. And, and sometimes Jira is also funny in that way. Like you go to a link, but it takes you to a different board than the Kanban board that we see. So um, we'll have to see if we can get the exact okay. link to the Kanban. Uh, board. I also see there's a, a Python dash three channel in Slack. Is that? Uh, uh, is there? I don't know. I don't know if I'm in there. No, I, Cliff, Cliff had started that before you. Oh, I am in there, but it's very, very. The last, <laughs> yes, the last post was for me in uh, July. Yes. Well, someone joined in August fourth, so I got a little message about that too. But yeah, okay. And yeah, we should definitely make use of that. 
let's let's actually let's make that the discussion focus. I'll, I'll let Jeremy know, and we can start okay. kicking off some things there. <clears throat> oh, one thing that might might be helpful is because I was looking at the Inker dashboard right now on Jira, yep. and it it looks like either it's like Python three and edX platform, and it's a giant epic. Um, if there were like little, if you split, if the, the work was split up into manageable chunks, open it, like open it X people could just, you know, grab one, like claim one and create a pull request and then get reviewed. And then, you know, you can get help in doing the work, but if it's a giant Epic, nobody's going to say, Hey, I'll help with that. No, right. Inker one is an Epic that's in, that's intended to cover the entire effort and the the actual work items, the leaves of that tree, are in, are separate other Inker tickets. Ah, so like Inker two through whatever forty five is whatever is the most right, recent. Like one. That. Yes, and that that is I can see is one of the things that adds to the confusion. Got it. Right. Okay, so basically the the entire Inker dashboard right now is all Python three upgrade. Uh, I'm not sure if it's literally all, but yeah, effectively Pretty it's all. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. That, that explains a lot. All right. Thank you. Sure. What, have, do people ha have any experience with trying to take one of these on and finding that it, it wasn't the bite-sized work that we had imagined? No? All right. Okay. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah. It was, um, I worked with a community member, his name is Shadi Knife, and we tried, so I, I, I was reviewing his work, that was the, um, my role, and one of the tasks wasn't really bite-sized, it took, I think, three pull requests to get done, Yeah, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like too much of work, so it was reasonable, and it was, it was fun to work with, and um, especially that we have a lot of existing um, examples to base on from the edX rules, which is mostly, um, I, I know that edX ACE was Python 3 from day one, so that was great um, example to take a look at and, and work on. It was overall positive experience to work with, mm -hmm. except great. that my time is... Cool. I mean, I want to do more, but not sure that I can. We we got a right. we got a blog post coming up I think maybe today or tomorrow um, where we included a uh, a quote from Felipe uh, from uh, Edunext. He's on the warrant. Yeah, yeah. He's here. So if you want to be added to that, we'll be more than happy to add your quote about it was a really good experience. Uh, so anyway. Yes, yeah, to send it, send that message to in Slack to to JM. We'll follow up. <laughs> okay. That's uh, Robert, because I don't see you guys, right? That's what? I'm sorry? What? That's Robert speaking. I'm sorry, no, that's, that was Namisha yeah, yeah, speaking. Yeah, that that's was me, me. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> sorry, we're No, I, I mean, I recognize your voice, but um, yeah. the other... Oh, no, that Hi, was me, JM. Me, John Morgan. Oh, Hi, I was speaking. Oh, oh hey, John. Yep, thank you. <laughs> but, uh, Good thing we have a laptop. <laughs> all right, uh, that's probably all we need to say about Inker at the moment, I guess, in Python 3. Yeah, just mutually assured destruction. That's kind of the name all of right, it. All right, end on a high note. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, thanks. All right. Uh, Namisha, do you want to give a, an Arch update? Um, Is she allowed no. to say no? Uh, <laughs> yeah, of yeah, course. No, I, I think uh, the, so we had our open edX, uh, architecture hangout on uh, on Tuesday of this week. Um, we're going to have another one in about two weeks to uh, focus on authentication. Uh, so please uh, feel free to join that. These are also recorded and update and, and on the OpenNX YouTube channel as well as in Confluence. Um, so that's that. The other thing is that in terms of process wise, we did merge earlier this week and OEP. Uh, open edX proposal for developer documentation. Um, developer documentation falls into our the umbrella of approachability of our platform. That's something that we are definitely investing time and effort on. Um, but 
to an extent we're doing, we're just trying to get some fundamental processes in place. Uh, that is then something that we as a community, both internally and externally, need to adopt for uh, our future efforts. So the one of the things that we we have the, the approach, the mindset that we have in that developer doc OAP is to try to have a process that has somewhat minimal effort, but the right amount of effort, effort. so basically sufficient to make sure we are adding uh, documentation for, for instance, how-tos of our features. Um, but in addition to that, the thing that we were finding to be valuable is to have rationale and intention, to state the intention behind our features and code. And we're doing that in the form of decision records. So decision records as a fundamental type of way that we document as we go is where we feel like it's a little bit of an effort, but not to an extent that it prevents developers from doing that work. So that, so develop decision records plus readme's, um, readme's provide the, a summary of the responsibility of that repo or of that component. Um, so readme's plus how-tos, like those are the major categories that we have indicated and then a few others. But anyway, feel free to take a look at that OAP if you have time. Um, and we're going to keep an eye on the adoption of it, the usages of it, and uh, whatever learnings we have over the next uh, few, few months and revisit it again. So that's basically it, an update from the process side. Uh, and once again, if you want to you want to talk more about architecture or get more about our architecture roadmap information, things like that, uh, the community hangout is a good place and you can always find us on Slack and in Confluence. Cool. Are there any questions from the community about that? Okay, sounds good. There is a question in chat about the Ironwood Hackathon. Yeah. Right, Valerie, so the hackathon isn't actually an Ironwood hackathon. It's happening in the Ironwood timeframe, but it's th this hackathon is something that edX engineers internally do. Um, and the project I've chosen happens to be one that I think would benefit the community and might be something the community could help with. Um, so I can, what can I do? I can invite people to join my project somehow. I'm not sure where that would go. I don't know. Or is it free to share in Slack? Does anything like, you know, external folks can join and, you know, just wondering. Yeah. Right. Right. In general, the hackathon isn't really quite organized for lots of external people to join in, in full ways. Um, but individual projects might make it possible for external people to join. So that's why I'm, I'm saying I will take on people in my project, but the hackathon in general, might not quite be ready for that. I see. No worries. I was just curious. Sure. No, I'd be, be glad to have your help. And, and that brings to mind, maybe we should think about how we would run, uh, you know, a, a global hackathon yeah. in, in, inclusive of, you know, all the uh, OpenX community. Mm -hmm. So let's, if you have ideas or thoughts around that, um, let me know. Cool. All right. Okay. Anything else about Ironwood? I don't think so. All right, cool. Okay. Um, so one other thing, uh, so now we get to the, the fun part of the discussion. Um, just to, to follow up on some things I've said in previous uh, Hangouts, uh, we are setting up a discourse uh, instance, uh, which I'm hoping that we'll be able to start beta testing uh, early next month. Um, and also something I'd like to think about or I want to think about is, uh, I'm thinking about how we would do our own Open edX instance. So, specifically tailored to people that have designed um, courses about course design on OpenEdX. Uh, it's a little meta, um, but that would be kind of like a first uh, iteration. Um, so if you have thoughts about that, uh, let me know. Uh, in any case, um, we're now to the fun section, which is uh, show and tell. I think uh, is, is Reji here? I've not seen him sign in, unless he's one of those two druids. He was going to do a, uh, a demonstration of Tutor, his um, one-click deployment thing. And I don't see him. He mentioned that he won't be yeah. able to make it. 
Oh, really? Oh, bummer. Okay. That's unfortunate. Um, does anybody have anything you want to show that you've been working on? So that'll be, that'll be two things I want to show the next time, the tutor as well as um, the anonymous uh, access bit. Um, so we'll have an open mic. Uh, anything you want to share or talk about, uh, now would be the time to do it. If you want to demonstrate something, um, you can have the screen uh, going once, going twice. Um, Oh, bummer. Oh, I didn't realize. Thanks. I didn't realize he had edited uh, the wiki to say he couldn't make it. Okay, never mind. Um, all right, then we'll uh, move along. Uh, you can have the rest of the hour back to you. Um, if you have, right now we're scheduled for February 14th. If, uh, if you think that's a bad day, and it may be, um, let me know and we can reschedule for either the, the week before or the week after. Um, I'll send out a note on the mailing list uh, asking for your, uh, uh, for everyone's thoughts on, uh, you know, the best time. So otherwise, um, thanks everybody for coming. If you have any parting shots, say so now. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. Take care, everyone.